Hello, good evening. It's Friday night. It's the 23rd of March, I believe. But again, we've made it to yet another Friday night. This is Guadalajara in the set of Jalisco. It's 79 degrees and it's a hot and steamy night. The heat is coming back. This is Vino Mexico. I am Jake, your host of your weekly wine show for all the wines here in Mexico and all over the north, all over this great land. We're bringing the wines direct to you, wine lovers, amantes de vino, everything you need to know, just as you've gotten used to over the last two weeks, and I hope you're enjoying it. If you are, please leave your comments and keep those good ideas coming in. We're doing this straight for you. Why are we here? We are here to bring all of the wines that are produced here in Mexico to you outside of Mexico so you can know just how great the wines are being produced here in this country. It's still a very small industry, but it is growing all the time to bring some really excellent quality wines. It is said that wine is a snapshot in a bottle of all the place, the people, the land, the sun, the wind, the sky, the birds, the sound, the energies that is to be opened by you, to be shared with your friends and your loved ones. Now, in many countries, the wines reflect the type of people. For in France, it is a country about food, so the wine is essentially made to go with food. In Germany, the wines are crisp. In Italy, the wines are vibrant. In Mexico, the people are warm and friendly, and the skies are blue. So therefore, it is natural that the wines here in Mexico are to be shared, and that is exactly what wine is supposed to be, and that is exactly what we are doing here. For example, after last week, the Adobe Guadalupe that we were looking at, I took it downstairs and we finished drinking that wine with my wife and then after that we opened up a bottle of wine from Bordeaux. It was a second growth wine, it's supposed to be an extremely high quality wine. It was really very very good. However, the final conclusion was we preferred the wine from Mexico. So that is a small food for thought or even a wine for thought if you will. Really why you should be looking at Mexican wines and seeing where you can get them and where you can try them because there are some fantastic examples that we're going to be looking at again tonight and of course we're going to be through the next few weeks and hopefully we have some really really special wines coming up very very soon from Sola Fortuna so we're really looking forward to that. Okay so how are we going to do this? My name is Jake as you know and I am not a sommelier. <laughs> I am not. I have no formal training of this whatsoever. Am I a wine expert? No I am not a wine expert. I am like you guys. I am a wine consumer. I like to drink good wine and drink it with great people. So that is what I do. So if you are one of those great people and you like to take a journey to learn more about the wines that we make down here in Mexico, come with me, stay with Vino Mexico, and each week we will be looking at a new one, get that wine as well, and you can drink it and enjoy your Friday night with us. So what are we going to do this week? As I've been saying for the last two weeks or still until we got hijacked by St. Patrick's Day over there last week. We are going to be looking at this one, a Monte Chanic. Zanic? Hanic? I'm not really too sure how you pronounce that, because X to me is an Englishman is a ch sound. But for example, here in the state of Jalisco, the old way of spelling Jalisco was with an X and not a J, because in Spanish J is a ch sound. So perhaps this is Monte Chanic. But from the information that I've found, <clears throat> now obviously I like to give you a bit of information about the winery, because wine we're going to try, uh, their website is currently being um, improved. So there is, there is technical works going on. And I cannot tell you if you can buy these direct from the winery, although there is an email um, that you can inquire. Their, their website is www.montechanic, with an X, dot com dot mx so once it's back up online check it out and have a look at all the great range of wines these guys are based up in the, the baja california up in the valle de guadalupe 30 kilometers from ensenada once again so just like last week which this wine apparently is supposed to be just next door to the uh, the adobe winery so we're still in the valle de guadalupe again it's still a very very warm place the, it's a place that has very, very little, very, very little rain. The average temperatures up there, um, well, you know, this is Mexico, they, they, they don't get very low. So you are talking quite high temperatures there. So lots of sunshine all the way through the year. Lots of breeze coming off the Pacific. I would imagine one day I will go there and check it out and I'll be able to tell you for exactly, but they get very, very little precipitation. 
Um, so for the irrigation of the, the vines up in the Valle de Guadalupe, um, the water there can give the vines and the grapes and the fruit a certain minerality, um, even a salinity, um, which is sometimes unusual. And some of the wines have it and some of the wines don't. I've never had a bottle of Montechanic before, so this is going to be a first. You saw it here, folks. Okay, so this is Montechanic. This is a Cabernet Sauvignon from 2013. Now, as always, to help us, we're going to be looking through our Wine Folly book by Madeline Phuket, www.winefolly.com. Absolutely awesome, great information for wine beginners, wine experts, or just people who like to expand their knowledge like we do here. So, this is the Cabernet Sauvignon. Okay, the, the Cabernet Sauvignon uh, from a warm climate, according to this, whereas the, the first Cabernet Sauvignon we tried, which was from the Paras Valley in Caracuila, which is over in the east, northeast part of uh, Mexico, close to the border with Texas, um, is a more cooler climate. So obviously out in the, the Baja California, it's more, it's definitely warmer, a warmer environment. So whereas before we were looking at red currants and black currants, this one could now be more of a cherry flavor and you know, back into the blackberry, just like the, the adobe last week was, you know, big blackberry bush. And yeah, very, very, um, I think sort of not sharp, but um, very, very fresh, fruity sort of flavor. But again, that was a, a, a mix of different grape varietals. This is just pure Cabernet Sauvignon. So it's gonna have a lot of herbal notes I'm expecting and a lot of wood, a lot of uh, wood flavors in there. Little minerality, we're looking for that signature, uh, that signature minerality of the, uh, the saltiness. I don't know if it's gonna be there. It's specifically from the warmer climate with the cherries, the black cherries. Is this gonna taste like German chocolate cake? There's only one way to find out. It's Friday. I know you've been waiting for it. I've certainly been waiting for it. We're waiting for it. I'm just off a flight from Atlanta. I, I was up in Miami for the last three days, which is a great place to be, but I was working nights. So I'm straight back off the flight, and I'm right back out here for you guys to get this wine. Let's get this weekend started. So yeah, the top one's off. Now, we've got the wine. We have the wine glass. And I don't have the $2 bottle opener from Walmart, so today I'm having to press into service Doris, Doris the bottle opener. And I've had this one for ooh, 10 years or so, and it, it, it works well. So it's a different type of wine thing, it's a little more, little more fun. You just stick the lady on the top and you twist her head down like that, and she goes, yay, we're opening wine! <laughs> but I don't like to push it all the way down, so... We tell us to shut up, put our arms down, and boom, there you go. Now, we did not go through the bottom of the cork because we don't like doing that. It's not a good thing. Okay, so as always, what do we do? Check the cork, make sure it's correct. This is a Montechanic uh, cork. It does not say the year, 2013, and again, you can see that we've had a little bleeding up the cork so again this could be something to do with you know the heat even though I've been keeping this in my thermal electro thermal wine cooler um, obviously in terms of transportation from the winery to the distribution centers and wherever it was that I bought this this bottle of wine and then obviously to their distribution centers then into the store and then into my car and then back here and then finally into the the thing and then moving around as things have I've, I've had this bottle now for maybe a year so yeah uh, it's getting done tonight but yeah perhaps a little bit of heat and we're hoping that once again that is not going to affect the wine it didn't affect the wine with the, the adobe so hopefully it won't so the cork as you can see now goes into our little cork glass Bing. Bing. that's another one Okay, so here you go, 2013 Cabernet serving you on Montechani Fire de Guadalupe. Happy Friday. Okay, the first thing, checking out the colour. Can you guys see that? That is quite a dark, but at the same time, very translucent red. It's sort of um, a 
deep burgundy colour, which is obviously very, very good. It's it's red going into light red. I wouldn't even call it pink or salmon or purple or blue. It's just red. It's straight up red. It's like rubies in a glass. So that's a good colour. It's very clear. But when I hold up that, I, there's maybe a little bit of purpley in there, a little bit of purple hue. And we'll call it red to purple. Okay, so let's go for the smell test. Now it's, it's very fresh and it is very, very fruit and the straight thing you get off there is the cherries. So yeah, we are talking black cherry. Um, but there's no chocolate in there so far that I can see or any cream, so it's you know not a black forest ghetto. It's a Mexican wine after all. Okay, so yeah, we're talking cherries <clears throat> and we are talking the red fruits. Not a lot of oak on there uh, that I can tell, so it's not like I'm going to be chewing on a cinnamon stick or a vanilla pod or, you know, half of a forest. Because sometimes that's not a good thing. I had a wine over the weekend that tasted like wet rocks. And I always wondered what that tasted like, but as soon as I tasted it, I went, yeah, this tastes like a wet Wednesday on a mountain. My brother said it tastes like lipsticks and fast cars. I'm not sure what, what that means. Okay, so this is definitely just cherries. It's just pure fruit all the way with not a lot else going on in there. So let's get in there. That is smooth, but it has bite. That's like a freshly shaved dog. It's like a freshly shaved Alsatian. He's a slightly annoyed and he wants to bite you, but he's nice and smooth because it's been shaved. Th in terms of the flavours, um, it's a little overpowered by the alcohol <clears throat> in that one. It's an instant alcohol burn and the tannins are very, very light. So yeah, this, this is a wild child type of wine, I would say. Um, perhaps that's representative of the name. I was just reading on the information on their Facebook site that the Zanuck, Chanuck, Hanuck word means uh, the first bloom after the rain. So if, if you look at that imagery, you're literally talking the rain coming in and flowers just boom, bursting into life. And that's what this does onto your tongue. It gets in there. It, first it tastes smooth, then it's like a small explosion in your mouth and like a heat and then a warming sensation. So this is a hot wine. Let me see if I can get anything else out of this. I've been practicing the spinning. Hopefully I won't spill it over myself. Again, it's still the fruit and there is a spiciness in there. Is it, so I mean, it's sort of like a pepper, a ground white pepper with cherries. Yeah, I mean, if we're talking Mexico, we're talking like mangoes with chili powder. But that's, that's what it reminds me, but it doesn't really smell like that, but that's what it's reminding me of. It's fruit with chili. Okay, a little more tannins that time. The heat is still there. And it's a very, it's not <clears throat> bitter, slight, very, of a slight sourness. So like a sour cherry, sour black cherry in there with pepper and chili and the heat. So it's a pretty simple wine. Um, is this a good wine to share? Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> as a an evening starter or you know something to you know if you if you're going out <clears throat> and you just really want to kickstart your night then this is a good thing you and a friend could just hammer through this bottle kickstart your night i mean it's literally like putting nitrous into your bloodstream boom and you're off and you're ready to go um if that's your thing this this could be for you um, if you just want to kick back and relax this may be a little bit too hot oh, it's not bad um, it's still a very good, nice palatable wine, it's not bitter, there's no flaws in there, it's not salty, there's no taste of salination, it's not overly oaky, it's not overly minerally, it's just fruit, it's spice, it's hot, it's arriba, arriba, you know, just straight over the board. <laughs> what else can you say? Why else people just cross the border from, from San Diego and just go down for a weekend in Tijuana? I mean, uh, I've heard stories, so I've, I've never had to experience that. I hope I never do. But that is exactly what this, this wine, this is, this is a weekender in Tijuana of a wine. Um, really tasty, really good. 
kickstart your Friday night um, if that is your thing. Um, I could quite happily sit and drink this one quite slowly. Um, so yeah. So, <clears throat> the Montechan at Cabernet Sauvignon 2013 via de Guadalupe, 30 kilometers outside of Ensenada. It's a weekend starter of wine. It'll get you going. It'll, you and a friend, it will catapult you into Friday night and have you dancing all the through the night, sort of powered on the pepperiness and the spiciness of a weekend in Mexico. And that sounds like a pretty good start to me. So, there's only one thing to try, and that is the Friday night double glug after work to get that, I think they call it the auto mnemonic, auto mnemonic reaction. It's the sort of reaction where you go, um, to anything that you, you ingest to see if it's good. It's, it's gonna get that bit. That's why I'm doing this, so you can see a physical reaction in that sense to get an idea of the, the character of the, the wine. Um, again, I hope I don't have to clean up off the floor, but it is Friday, so here we go. <clears throat> Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, that's hot. That's a hot wine. This, this wine needs to be treated with respect. Yeah, you can't um, you, you you can't neck this wine. Um, <laughs> it's a good one. Okay, so uh, running a little bit longer, I'm going to try and cut this down a little bit. Um, but yes, the Montchanic Cabernet Sauvignon, 2013, via the Guadalupe. It's a weekender of a wine. If you've had a really bad week, this could be the one for you. Perhaps not so much if you just want to kick back and relax. But it's certainly one to get your teeth into. So the wine is uh, the Monte Chanic, www.montechanic with an x.com.mx. Check them out. Check out their wines. They've got a whole range. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's a flavor for everybody. So thank you very, very much for all the people who've joined us in the last week. We do hope that you've been you enjoying this, this series. If you do, please like, please subscribe, please leave comments down below. All the information that you need to know about these wines, where we're getting them, is all downstairs. Like, subscribe, comment, let us know what you want to see. Next week, we will either be doing the start of the series of the wines from Solo Fortune, or we're going to be doing something a little bit special. Because the wines over here in Mexico are very... Uh, Diverse. You, you have all the varieties from Italy, from Spain, from France. You get some really, really strange ones. And um, one of the most popular ones that we have here is uh, the Nebbiolo, which is an Italian, an Italian wine, and can be quite difficult. Now these guys, uh, Crew Garage, from the Baja California once again. I mean, a lot of wines come. These guys I met last year and their wines are extremely good. So, Crew Garage, perhaps next week, or the Solar Fortune uh, wine series that we're going to be starting very, very soon. So, thank you very, very much. Have a great Friday. Have a great weekend. Look after yourselves. Muchísimas gracias. Buenas noches y salud.